So a little while ago, I did a review on my Samson 550 soundbar, and I had high hopes for it, given that the MS650, which is this speaker, this soundbar here, um, had such glowing reviews. I thought, okay, the M550, it's only a bit smaller, must sound you know, pretty similar. I'll go for that, it was like 100 pound cheaper. Turned out to be a big mistake and it was really unbalanced. So yeah, you could get really clear sound on it and when the people were speaking, yeah, crystal clear and blah, blah, blah. But as soon as you got some sound effects come in, it can, they drowned out the, the voices and you had to start turning up to hear the voices and then that made everything too loud. It was unbalanced. And since then I've actually seen some other serious online reviews say similar things. So I got the MS650, I thought I'd take a chance, should have got that in the first place. Long story short, I have to say, I'm really happy with it. I'm not saying it's the greatest speaker ever. If that's what you're thinking, oh, is that gonna sound absolutely fantastic? It's a surround sound soundbar. No, because at the end of the day, surround sound has to surround you. So I like this. I think it's really well balanced. You get fantastic clarity in the speech. It's got a really crystal clear high end, maybe slightly harsh. A really good low end when you need it. Not like a huge sub subwoofer, but yeah, some really decent s slam there when you need it. But at the end of the day, this is like having really wide, great depth stereo. It's, don't get confused by the term surround sound. I know this is actually a 3.0 speaker. In other words, you've got dedicated center speaker when the soundtrack allows, and you've got left, right speakers. But it's not gonna surround you as such, but it's gonna give a, a wide immersive sound to whatever you're, you're listening to. But it's gonna be more like stereo than a surround sound. Although it does have true surround sound decoding. So that's my long story short, because people always say, why do I have to wait for the end of the video? So yeah, I really like it, it's balanced. It's not a knockout home cinema, but it's like a, certainly a step up from a, a stereo uh, system in terms of stereo imaging that you will get. Now, start from the beginning. So this is the Samsung MS650 Sound Plus soundbar. What does Sound Plus mean? Well, so Samsung came out with this range and they're saying, well, with our new range, you don't need a subwoofer. Of course, that's marketing speech because at the end of the day, you need a big box to get really low end grunt. But, however, having heard the speaker now, you do get satisfying grunt, enough to, you know, to kind of, oh, that was a bit loud. You know, to kind of, oh, that was a bit. But yeah, it's definitely not that low end. Now, it's rated from 40 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. 40 hertz, and that sounds quite reasonable from what I'm listening to, that's pretty, pretty deep. However, bear in mind that for instance, the soundbar that you can add to this, that would go down to 27 hertz. And there is a significant difference in the effects that you will hear and how you experience them, you know, because the lower you go, the more you feel it in your gut. So the MS650 has nine speakers. Uh, they are arranged in sets of three. So you get, for each set, you get one tweeter and you get two subwoofers and they're arranged in threes. So there's a tweeter subwoofer to the, to the right, a tweeter subwoofer to the left, a tweeter subwoofer for the dedicated center speaker. So that ties the speech to the TV and, it, and it's really effective. The tweeters are a little bit different from a normal tweeter because they start from six to 700 hertz going up to 20,000 kilohertz, which means, according to Samson, most of the speech will be handled just by the tweeter, which they say, rather than the subwoofers handling a lot of the speech, which normally they, they would do, which means, according to them, you, you get more clarity on the speech. And I certainly think the main thing about the speaker definitely is the clarity of speech that you never lose, no matter how loud the sound goes. Almost to the extent, I have to say, it may be slightly on the harsh side. Now that works really well for home cinema where you, you don't wanna lose that speech in the center as all the effects come in. Not quite so well when it comes to music and especially as you start turning up, the bass starts reducing, 
so you get more of that harsh treble. I'm not saying in any way it's, it's unpleasant. I'm just saying it can be a little fatiguing over the long run, depending on your ears. I know a lot of people who aren't used to modern hi-fi, and that's, that's always a problem, that it's quite shocking when they first hear it in the actual, you know, the sharpness and the clarity of the, that high end. Because people, some people are used to the old warm vinyl sound. In terms of power, I know they say 450 watts, but that's total system draw is 450 watts. I think it's, from what I can find, it's 150 watts RMS. Although each actual speaker, each woofer, each tweeter, gets its own amplifier and each amplifier is rated at 20 watts. I mean, there's no doubt the, the specs are great. On paper, you know, this is a well-engineered, well-specified product, but it's never going to be a full surround kit unless you get the add-ins, and that's the other thing. So they advertise it as you don't need a separate subwoofer, but by the way, we do a separate subwoofer, which ain't cheap. It's like 500 quid. From what I read online, it's, it's a really high-end subwoofer, but, you know, and, and it's great that this system can grow, but would you start with something that, that's advertised as an all-in-one and they want to spend 500 pounds, which is as much as the, the soundbar itself on a subwoofer? <laughs> I may well do at the end of the day, but not today. They also do separate wireless rear speakers um, and they retail like 250 quid. Not cheap, and they're only little ones. Although I see if you go on eBay, you can normally get, get them for around 90 quid. A bit more, a little bit less, a little bit more, maybe refurbished, some of them say new. But you seem to, uh, seem to be a lot of them going cheaper. And it suggests if you also, if you look on online, online reviews, they're a little bit hit and miss as to whether they will, will really work well wirelessly and whether you find them effective or not. Because there is a little bit of setup that you need to go through. Now, the subwoofers are not, a, you're not your normal uh, circle. They are like Ogbong shape and they are 4.3 inches by 2 inches. They are deliberately that shape because Samsung say that allows it to disperse the sound over a wider area. I have to say it is quite wide. You don't have to be listening center on. So as I, as I already said, I really like it. It does work well as long as you bear in mind it, some people may find it a little bit harsh at the high end. Although you can turn down the treble and indeed there's an app with a seven band graphic equalizer and you can tinker with it a little bit more depending on your preference. As I said, the, the frequency response is 40 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. The one I had before, the MS550, which I could never recommend, is rated from 50 hertz. And that extra bass anyway, it definitely makes a bit of difference, give it a little bit more warmth. But at least, but I have to say, the thing about this speaker to me, speaker soundbar, is that it's well balanced. And that is great, because if you don't want to annoy your neighbors, you can play it low, and it will sound, still sound good. You can turn down the bass, turn up the treble a little bit. It sounds, still sounds really well balanced. It sounds very reasonable in a, small, in a small room. Then if you don't have a problem with your neighbors, you can turn, the, turn it right up. You can turn the bass up, uh, do what you want with the treble, but you know, have something that's gonna have some real big slam to it. Turn, it, turn the volume right up. It gives a reasonable amount of loudness. Bear in mind, it's still around 150 watts. There's a limit, but it's pretty loud and it's satisfying really loud and that's the thing that's what i find impressive that it doesn't overwhelm at any volume so i can still have it very low thing to bear in mind is some on some samson speakers come with a night mode this doesn't i don't know why but it doesn't have the night mode where um it's reducing that bass a little bit to make it less annoying to people around you but you can tailor it anyway to come up with a, a night mode. And as I said, you turn it down and because the clarity is so good, uh, it doesn't really matter about the bass. The rest of it is still quite pretty satisfying. It's still wide, still clear. So th that was a qu quite a, a surprise to me. I was thinking that if it's gonna be sound good in cinema terms, loud, throw out a big sound, you're gonna have a problem when you turn it down, which is normally what happens. And it's normally they, when, between turning it down and turning it up, there's a lot of processing going on that will boost or reduce bass and treble depending on the volume. That's not obvious on this. Um, although I say 70% onwards, bass is obviously reduced, you know, physics being what it is. As you go through the, the volume scale, there, there isn't anything obvious that you can say, oh, it's just changed, it's just changed, which you can do on some speakers. So a closer look at the speaker itself. In the box, you will get your power cable. 
you will get your wall brackets. You will get a little uh, cable tidy that goes on the back that you can wrap your loose cables around. You get some feet to for the when you wall mount it so it doesn't hit the wall. You also comes with an optical cable and also comes with batteries for your remote. Now on the speaker itself, you have controls physically on the speaker at the end. I keep saying speaker, of course it's a soundbar. Power button, input select, volume up and volume down. If we turn it over on the back. So we've got the, the, the power in for its own power cable, but we've also got a separate power in which is for a Samsung TV. So this makes most sense with a Samsung TV, not, not least because you can pass through the power. So you have one power going in there, one coming out to the TV. So you're not doubling up your power leads. Also because the Samsung TV remote A can work wirelessly via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi with the soundbar. And also because the TV remote will also work the soundbar. So it makes sense, you know, if you don't have a Samsung TV, but if you do have a Samsung TV, even more reason to go with something like, like this. So you've got your pass-through power, which I understand only works with the Samsung TV, but don't quote me on that. Then you have your optical in. Now, the first thing I would say, the one thing I don't like about these, these, this design is it's awkward getting cables in there. So you've got your first cut out, and then you've got a second cut out, and you've got to come at an angle, and you can get angled cables, yes, but personally I find I find getting things in there because you've got to come at an angle to see what you're doing I find that quite awkward you've got your optical in you've got your wireless now it says wireless and what it looks like a USB input isn't a USB input this is for a wireless dongle which is specifically to work with the wireless subwoofer and the re wireless rear speakers so that's a little bit confusing you then get your auxiliary in so that's a straight analog input you've got your hdmi out this is arc this is audio return channel so that means on this particular hdmi connection it's a two-way communication so you can have one cable between the samson soundbar and the samson tv and you can have two-way communication. For instance, if you had all your other HDMI peripherals going into your TV, you still only need the one HDMI coming out of your TV into the soundbar for your sound. You've got your one HDMI in. So maybe, you know, if there's a weak point, that's one of the weak points. You've only got one HDMI in. One more would have, would have been nice. You do get 4K pass-through on this. So it's worth noting the specs. Uh, which are not going to be the same from soundbar to soundbar, and certainly are not the same on the 550, which doesn't do 4K pass-through. This does 60B HDR 4K pass-through, so you're well covered for the near future. The one thing it doesn't do in terms of near future is Atmos 7.1, or, well, it goes up to 128 speakers, doesn't it? But it doesn't have decoding support for Atmos. You also get your buttons here. Now, that's to, so you can, uh, with one button, you can set up your Wi-Fi network. Well, connect it to the Wi-Fi network. You've got your speaker to add the wire. You'll need to do, use that to pair with other wireless Samsung speakers. So that's pretty much the back. The actual display itself, I will show you. I'm going to just plug this in. Already, you can see why that's awkward because there's only one way you can do that. So it's going out, it's coming in. See, you, you can't help but bend these cables. We turn it on and the display is all in this little bit on the right hand side. So you may or may not like the fact that it's going to be in your face. I think to the right, so you don't always look at it as not a bad place, but it's a little bit on the small side. So it's coming in, digital in would tell me the inputs. You can cycle through your inputs. Digital in, auxiliary, HDMI, Wi-Fi, BT, <laughs> Bluetooth. Those are the inputs. You then can adjust your treble. So 
if I hit my options button, it tells me treble, and then rather than hit the volume or bass button, you then have to use the, the circle implement in the middle. So I go back to treble, and then I can use my treble down, down. Then that will go off after a second. If I want to adjust the volume, this is the bit I like because it's not a straight, it's, it's, I haven't had a remote like this where it's actually a movable little lever. So I can go up in the volume, I can come down. I know it's definite. So even if you are in a dark room and you're feeling for the remote, you won't ever get it wrong between the volume and the other buttons and the bass button because it's, it's comes above the surface and is flickable it's up and down. That, I really like that. Um, so there's no fiddling and trying to quickly get your eyes on what exactly you're looking at. You can do it all by feel. And if you don't press it for up or down and you just hit it straight down, that's an easy way to mute it. So I just click it straight down and it's muted. Click it again, it's off. I quite like that. I think it's a good design. Same for the bass. Now, if I Got to be careful with the bass because, for instance, if I say turn my bass up, and then I can't remember what I left it on and I want to go and see it. If I was to press it down instead of up or down, well, when I, if I was to press it straight down instead of moving it upwards or downwards, it's going to reset it. Now, <laughs> that to me is a bit silly because now look, if I just quickly hit the bass button, it's reset to zero. Um, that's a bit silly. So you've got to remember not to push it down, otherwise you're going to re reset it. On the remote, you also get to use your surround mode options. So just hitting surround one time will tell me if it's on or off. See now that it's on. If I wanted to turn it off, I'd have to hit it a sec again. If I come to my sound mode, and it's telling me it's in surround mode. If I hit it again, it's, it doesn't say standard. And then I can cycle through my other options and just by leaving it on something, it will go to that option. Smart mode is completely separate. If I now switch it to smart mode, the other surround mode that I, that I hit will be disabled. So if I go to smart mode, first of all, it will tell me it's off. I then have to turn it on. So that now disables the other surround mode. So it's a little bit, um, you've got to think about it because you just think, oh, you're either in surround or you're not. And you'd think smart mode was just another surround mode. It's not, it, it's, it's two separate things. So smart mode will automatically change the sound to what it thinks is being played. And it works pretty well, it's pretty dynamic. If I hit smart mode, it's either on or it's off. So I've now got smart mode off, but I've got to remember, surround's off as well. So now it's in straight stereo mode. So <laughs> a little bit of thought goes into it. Now, I have to say, as far as the sound goes, on first listen and for a quick impressive sound, smart mode works really well. It definitely widens the sound stage to its maximum in terms of not just left and right, but up and down. That's noticeable. But if I hit smart mode, the speech seems to be tied even more to the center of the TV rather than lower down where the actual sound bar is. However, and it sounds good, it sounds really dynamic. But if you really have a good listen, you start to hear the processing and you start to hear hollow bits in the nature and unrealistic elements of the sound. So over the long term, as your ears start adjusting, I actually found the sound mode that I preferred is standard surround. And standard surround means you're actually getting what was actually on the original track. It's gonna be decoded to 3.0 and you're actually gonna get what was meant for the center speaker on the center speaker and what was meant for left and right on the left and right. Over the long term, I found that was the best way to listen and I've just left it on that mode. That was the basic overview of, the, of the, what you're gonna be, you know, in real life, how you're gonna be using the soundbar. However, there is another way to use it and that is with a pretty decent app. On this app, you can use a seven band graphic equalizer. You can add other speakers to the multi-room setup. That's the other thing to remember. This can be part of a Wi-Fi multi-room setup. You can connect to your phone via Bluetooth, but Wi-Fi is going to sound better. And not only that, you can have multi multiple speakers in multiple rooms and set them all individually, all done on the app. You can 
also do the same elements that you would do on the sandbar, such as adjusted bass and treble. And by the way, if you add a subwoofer, you get a wider range that you can adjust on the bass. You can also rename speakers in the app. So this is a quick look at the app. So this is the Samson app from within which you can access most of the features of the soundbar, such as the seven band graphic equalizer, which you can't use on the soundbar itself. So from within the app, you can tailor the sound uh, to quite fine detail and embed that setting into the speaker itself. You can also access the basic bass and treble, which you can also adjust on the soundbar itself, but it's a kind of easier to do it within the app itself. You can rename the speaker if you've got several Samson speakers. It's easy to come in and actually give it a name. You're going to know exactly what, what it is. And you can also select the inputs from within the app. So you can play all your music from within the app if you so desire. Um, and this is where it all shows up. It's really hard for me to give you an impression of what it would sound like in real life. To be honest, I really knew this is, for me, the one time that binaural recordings really work because they give you a sense of the sound stage. This isn't a, uh, a binaural recording, it's a straight recording, which is what I normally do on my speaker reviews because it get, for, as far as I'm concerned, it gives the best impression of what a speaker will sound like apart from not having a sense of the sound stage, which is what I know a lot, a lot of these serious uh, speaker reviewers are doing binaural rec recordings, but really, I know, yes, you could get a good sense of the stereo imaging, but what you're really getting is a sense of the acoustics of the room. That was the whole point of binaural recordings, that you're getting the sense of what you would listen to in the room, which means how the sound bounces off your room and how it's absorbed into your furniture. So. Uh, to me, it, it muddies um, these reviews a little bit because it, it only gives me a sense of what the the actual reviewer was listening to, rather than what's going to sound like. I'm, anyway, I digress. The point being, I haven't. These aren't really really going to give you a great. If you've no idea what the speaker is going to sound like, it's not going to give you a great idea, other than comparative to if you've got nothing at all. So here, I'm going to give you a, a quick comparison with, between. If you listen to, if I'm listening to my TV, if I'm listening to a cheap soundbar, which in this case is my Kit Sound Ovation soundbar, and then with the Samson. So, you know, this is not great in-depth speakers because unless you're listening on the 5.1 sense uh, surround sound system or I'm making a binaural recording, it's not, you're never gonna hear what I hear. It's just gonna give you an idea if you've already got some sense of what your TV sounds like or, your, or a cheap one sounds like. This is, the, and as I say, the, the main thing about this is the, balanced from low to high volumes. It stays balanced. You never lose that speech. It's the clarity of the speech. But in the end, you might find that's, that clarity is a little bit wearing. But personally, I like it because it, gives, it means I get great clarity at low volume. So I really like that. So this is a quick comparison between a TV, a cheap soundbar, and the Samson soundbar. They're hiding something. Come on, you don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. So just be part of the plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids won't last one day out of the scorch. What the hell? The course of your lives will determine the course of humanity. Into light. Or darkness. Now, when we went through the, if you're still watching, by the way, uh, if, when we went through the various options on the surround sound modes, you, you can see, so you get the different options. You get the standard, which is straight decoding as the, as the actual track itself was, but then you get clear audio where the actual speech itself, the range in which speech is, is increased relative to the rest of the track. So again, speech is supposed to come even more outside of the original track to make it even easier to hear. You get a music mode where if you are listening to music, and by the way, music does sound pretty good in this, apart from it's a little bit harsh, it's not, you know, it's not like a real serious stereo, but it's very pleasant, 
goes to decent volumes, you get a decent sense of stereo imaging. It's not gonna replace a hi-fi, but it does it well, and uh, the point being, a lot of sound models do not do music very well. It is a pleasant listen on this. In music mode, it's supposed to emphasize instruments. You then get a movie mode. Movie mode is supposed to heighten the sense of realism. Now, of course, that was what the original <laughs> track uh, in Dolby or whatever you're listening to was meant to do, but it's there if you want to have a listen to it. You also get the sports mode. Sports mode is supposed to give you a sense of it being within a stadium. If you're listening to, say, a football match or rugby match or soccer match, it's supposed to emphasize the sort of echoing you'd get within a stadium. You know, these are all fun to play with, but at the end of the day, I just end up being on standard mode because it works best with most things. At the end of the day, that was the original soundtrack. I think it works. So this is a comparison just to give you a sense of the difference you may or may not hear the difference in this short clip, just to give you a sense of the different modes that you can use on the soundbar, on the Samson soundbar. They're hiding something. Come on, you don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. They're hiding something. Come on, you don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the sports. Come on, you don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. You don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. You don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the sports. You don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. You don't know that. They lied to us. We never escaped. It's all just been part of their plan. What do they want from us? Thomas! The maze is one thing. The two kids wouldn't last one day out in the scorch. What the hell? So that kind of wraps up my review of the Samson soundbar, which I really like. Um, just other things of note, if you want to hang it under your TV, you can get a bracket that will 
allow you to drop this just below your TV in a single bracket. So the TV is, you've got your TV on the wall and that just hangs from the TV on this one bracket. Personally, I would really like to know if what I'm listening to is actually in surround sound or not. I would like the option on the LCD to tell me if I listen to a straight stereo or I'm listening to something uh, surround sound enco encoded or if it's something that's not actually supported. For instance, Atmos or something like that it doesn't support everything, but it does support the main 5.1 Dolby modes, etc. Um, HD audio recordings. It does support the most of the things you are going to encounter out there at the moment. It's got bass distortion cancelling technology. Now, it's described as the distortion that you will get as you go up, as you get more and more bass. That, that, the wave that it creates, the, the technology creates an anti-wave, so it cancels out what it predicts will be the dis distortion that is about to occur. The idea being it sounds more sharp, more refined less of the distortion you can hear on poor speakers as you go up the volume. Does it work? Yes, I do hear a, a, a lack of distortion, but bear in mind they are, they are lowering the bass as you go up the volume anyway. So it's kind of, is it the reduction in bass or is it the technology that's actually making the distortion uh, less apparent? So yeah, I think I've covered all my thoughts there. Just to say again, this is a great soundbar. It's slightly expensive if you get the retail. I didn't get retail, I got refurbished. You can now get some decent bargains on eBay, for instance, refurbished or you know nearly new. Now, at a reasonable price level that I think reflects what, you, what you're actually buying. Because you're not buying a surround system unless you're gonna add all the really expensive gear to it. What you're buying is something that's like kinda like stereo but really immersive, plus really good clarity in the speech. That is what I get most out of this. Now that, as I said, to some people may be harsh, but to me, you never, you never, there's never a point at which you can't actually hear what someone's saying, which is often happens in the, in the soundtrack with lots of action going on. That is the strong point of this speaker and you can tailor it. You've got the seven band gra graphic equalizer plus bass and treble controls on the soundbar itself. So it's a great immersive soundbar, but more like decent good stereo rather than a surround where sounds start coming from the back and it, you, you feel like you're in it you don't it's in front of you but it's a great upgrade if you've got nothing and it's a good buy if you really want something compact all in one which is really what this is all about although you can add the other elements to it it's about having something that's all in one so i thoroughly recommend the speaker and if you're thinking about this or the 550 it's a no-brainer the 550, really unbalanced, really unsatisfying. This well worth the money. So I hope you got something out of that and thank you for watching. UK.